Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff. How are you today? Good. How you doing, Roger? I'm doing well. Folks, welcome to the Big Picture with Jeff Zaninari and Roger Scott. We do this every Tuesday. You will get a chance to watch this on YouTube, and soon we're going to be doing these, these live. What we want you to do is like these videos, subscribe to our Wealth Press YouTube channel, and most importantly, post your comments below. I actually read every one of them, and I'll respond, and I'll forward it to Jeff. And uh, if you have a good question, we'll answer it for everybody. So please, please, please participate. And as we go live, write down your question that you may ask Jeff and me live. I think that'll be really, really fun to do in our first session. All right, I, I, I wanted the, the record button to start right away because I didn't want to get into any comments before we actually got into it because there's so much to talk about today. So how are you doing, Jeff? I'm good, good. Good. Market's What's uh, making things a little bit better? It's been too much bearishness. Oh, talk, talk about too much bearishness. I mean, geez, Louise, every indicator, every sentiment, I mean, everything, every statistical study, everything you look at, is is telling us that this market is just grossly oversold in the short term yeah um earnings are here uh you want to comment a little bit talk a little bit about what's ahead as you're talking about earnings i have this sheet that i that i'll it's a, a little cheat sheet that i made it's uh for it's it's between everything that happened from monday all the way till wednesday so if you want to kind of if you talk about them i can kind of you know point them here to the eps and so forth yeah, we were talking last week and I said one easy layup sector that I think is going to be is going to be the banks. Yeah. Trading. Look at what they did in trading. Goldman Sachs crushed trading. They made about half a billion dollars more than they were supposed to. The trading in the single digits on uh, PE. And so people were looking at those stocks as super cheap. They still making the printing money. The, the recession hasn't really rolled into finance quite that that part of finance quite yet. So conditions are still ripe and they're cheap either way. So if we don't get a, if we don't get a severe recession, the stocks are going to bounce hard if they go back to a normal multiple in the double low double digits. So, you know, those stocks like we talk a lot about on this show about low hanging fruit, easy easy setups, you know, situations where you don't have a lot of risk and risk compared to reward. And just like I've been loving energy, I've been loving financials as a place where you can get a pretty good bang for your buck with like a limited downside compared to some of the higher flyers that still have a lot of have a lot of froth frankly even after that sell off you know i i agree with you and just just you know i haven't really looked at the financials from a momentum level but from a pers momentum perspective they are really really overdone right now um looking at the number of stocks trading above the 200 day moving average and uh, I'll go back. I can't go back here before 2014. I don't have a Bloomberg terminal like you. I'm, I think you can go back to God only knows beginning of time. But but um, w nonetheless, as you could see here, this this really confirms what Jeff is talking about, folks. I mean, look at this. This is 2020. Uh, this is this is the previous. I wish we had a 20, 2008 here. But just to give you some perspective of of, of how the how the how it shakes out. I mean, I mean, look at this thing here it's it's really low i mean we are really really low and, and this goes back to 2008 so you could see some, get get some perspective here we're not really far off and this is why i've been telling people like this is not the time to sell your favorite grandma stock this is nah. i mean th those days are way i mean this was the time to do that not yeah. not right here we said that last week too yeah that was a big pound that was a big thing we were saying like don't panic sell don't panic on the cpi cpi came out strong and the market rallied yeah, gave yeah. back the next day, but this rally is continuing now this week. People are just, there's a little bit of short-term exhaustion on the selling. Unless you get like new bad news, I think the market's poised to go higher. I think there's there's more upside for sure. Well, you know, the way, the way I looked at it was this. The the rally that we had, the rally, oh my, look at that. My, uh, my cat decided to jump up here. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's Clyde. Clyde decided to make an appearance today. What up, Clyde? Hey, Clyde, how are you? How are you, Clyde? This they like him more than me here at Wealth Press. I got to tell you, he's very popular around here. So <laughs> we'll just kind of let him do his thing. Um, as 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 this is how I looked at it. The bottom of the U.S. market from all the negative news I saw came right around here, and then we saw this. This was the earnings rally last quarter, and then and then right here, most of what we saw here was global news. Really, global news. London, you know, England, Bank of London. Uh, yeah. China, Asia, Japan, I mean, really, the world really kind of fell into this whole environment. Right. And then 
and then but I didn't see a lot of it from the US. So when the Fed came out with a really bad CPI and retail sales weren't good either on Friday, the, you know, the fall, uh, I think it was 2 days later or maybe the next day. But but I know retail sales was on Friday, I think CPI was on Wednesday or Thursday, but it doesn't matter. It didn't do it, it the market rallied off of that too. So the fact to me, the fact that small caps are not really and I and I don't like these stocks. I'm not a fan of these stocks. I'm simply pointing it from a from a from a sentiment perspective. If if you look at it, I mean, yeah, we kind of dipped a little bit here, but I mean, really, if you think about it, this thing, this this thing made a low back in May. So to me, to me, it looks like it looks like the global economy is catching up, but earnings are saving the day again. At least that's what it looks like right now. But one thing I wanted to comment before moving ahead, and and this is something that I'm I'm really, I want to get your take on it. I made a comment on it a couple of times already. I mean, look at so Netflix, right? They were expecting two dollars thirteen cents. Look at what's baked into this market right now. Negative thirty three percent in the EPS. I mean, how the hell does a company not outperform that if thirty three now look you think that's bad? Look at this. Look at this. This is Tesla, right? This look at this. This is what's baked in. Wow, yeah. Th this isn't my this isn't my estimate. This is baked. This this is if you go to your Bloomberg terminal, this is yeah. what you would see. I'm not making this up. They're no, expecting a dollar per share. I mean, mm -hmm. Jeff, tell me, how do you not outperform numbers like this? I mean, you go to and tell somebody your company's gonna, your EPS is gonna be down forty six percent almost. Hey guys, I'm gonna be down fifty percent for the quarter, and you come out forty, thirty five. How do you not outperform these? So, so are we are we putting on my my point here is, are we just are we just doing what we've been doing all along, and things are just getting worse, and the and the analysts are just continuously d down downgrading and down, down giving us lower estimates, and that's why we're rallying, or or. Are you seeing are you seeing some upside with these numbers that are coming out at all? I'm with you. I see upside. I see upside because I see that I see that you know the bearishness swung so hard and everybody, you know, comp these these guys are not dummies that are running these companies. They use it as a hall pass to 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 dampen expectations so that they can outperform, right? So they can deliver on the upside. That's what everyone does. And so you always see if there's a good crisis, everyone uses a crisis as an excuse to suck. It happens with COVID. It happens at jobs. It happens all day long. It happens with contractors. It happens with delivery of your sofa. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So when you get better, ex better than performance and expectation, <clears throat> you're positively surprised. You, you buy back the stock with two hands. And I think a lot of companies are going to outperform. I think the companies that don't, outperform already dampened are going to be taken to the woodshed. So it's a, it's a bit of a dicey situation because if, if you miss or if you down, if you guide lower in the future already puked out numbers, that's going to be bad. That's going to be a bad day in, for stockholders of those stocks. On the whole though, I, I, like, I like where your head's at in terms of outperformance, uh, particularly in some of these tech names, like, wow. 50% down in a year. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, look at this. I mean, I mean, look at Tesla. I mean, geez, this thing is, uh, let me just put it up here. I mean, this thing is just, oh God, you can't type anything in. You know, when you're, when you're trying to type something, you just can't do it. <coughs> the computer just, the computers. Yeah. Stopped. Right. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, yeah. 400, 220. And I mean, this is, this company is actually a company that's, you know, that's now making money. So I, I think I think this haircut is 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 kind of sufficient, especially for S and P five hundred stocks. Um, I think we're gonna so so I think we're gonna see a lot of that this quarter. And honestly, I don't think we can answer the question yet. Are things getting better? I think it's gonna take us at least two more quarters to get to that level. Um, yeah, I don't think it needs to be answered. I think in the short run, the the problem with the problem with the stock market right now isn't the real economy as much as it is the Fed and interest rates. And so that will, the problem is you got this, 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 and I know I keep going back to the same thing, but it's the overarching story. You've got this guy and his cronies in Jay Powell that are going to look at a stock rally, which is already happening as a net negative to their policy. They want pain. Remember, they don't want to recoup. They don't want companies bouncing back and recouping 20% in a week of their year's losses, which is going to happen invariably because that's how stock market trading works. Overshoots on the downside, bounces too hard back. So I view, I view the big overhanging thing as the Fed 
the Fed's going to use that as, look, we need it to still, we need it to still get more subdued. We need it. This is too much. There's too much froth. So until the froth is totally done and it's getting close, I don't think there's so much more downside. I think it's going to be a back and forth story. I think we have more upside in the shortest of terms. So like the rest of this month, I think we bounce. I think there's going to be a big uh, election trade in early November. And then I think the market's going to shift to fit back to being super fed centric and, uh, and black Friday, man, a lot of people are counting on this Christmas is still being normal. We haven't really seen how people feel until that we're going to see at that point, if people are really feeling the pinch or not. Well, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree with that a hundred percent. And I'll tell you why, because we, I mean, we, we kind of have, I mean, the, 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 the retail sales and discretionary data has been, re I mean, it's been pretty bad. And, and it, so, I mean, you, you're think, are you saying that it may out, it, we may have better than expected, or are you saying it may really <laughs> worse. surprise, worse than, okay, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you, okay. Yeah, because okay. people, 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 you know, this is a, this is slow, the slowest period of the year. Yeah. After the beginning of the school year is now people hold off on buying anything until the holidays. If they didn't buy it before for the beginning of the school year, they said, well, I'll just wait and buy it as a Christmas gift for the kids. Right, right. Or I'll get, you know what I mean? I'll get a new computer. I'll see what the Black Friday deals are. Are, are, are people still, I mean, Black Friday, Cyber, what is this? Cyber, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, is that what it is? is it, because a lot, I know a lot of people in the, in, in the last five years, they've been they've been switching to the to the internet part of it but i think but but i but i get what you're saying it all it's all consumer yeah, spending it's not it doesn't, foot traffic at the mall it's, but it doesn't it, matter it, it doesn't it doesn't, ma it doesn't, it doesn't matter doesn't, companies put their deals out at that point time. right they right put their deals out in that point yeah yeah you, you know wow i you know you're saying it may be worse than expected and here i am talking about tesla saying we're down 50 percent. we're down 46 well, i don't think that the economy i think the stocks have run in front of the economy but the economy is lagging the stocks yeah right yeah. and in certain places you know we should we looked at tesla tesla is still the world beating ev company but that was an 80 pe stock that's yeah. an 80 that's an 80 after a 50 percent was 150 PE before. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, they're making money in the trajectories like that, but you know, like every car in the world is not going to be a Tesla in three years. It's priced like it is kind of still. So there's danger. There's th I'm just saying that there's, there's risk. A, there's, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of risk. Now, risk. right now, what we're looking at, we're looking at the continuous two-year note. This is, uh, this is going back uh, nice. plenty, plenty of time, 20 years. Um, typically, typically, there's an asset that I use, and, and I just want to give people an idea of how, in, how much instability we have. Mm. Um, this asset right here, um, let's see here. No, no, uh, SNH, what is it? What is it called? Um, it was a cat, SHT, is it? It's a, it's a cash asset that follows the two year, but it doesn't matter. Basically, this, this is the- um, That's the future. This is the, two, this is the future, so it's, it, it basically follows this. But I want to, typically my point here is, this is the cash asset that follows the two year where where hedge funds and institutional guys when they want to roll money into cash they would put it into this asset exactly that follows right. that's and exactly I, that's a great now, point, Roger. now so so look at look at how look at how st and, and and that makes sense because i mean look from 2008 to 2000 it, 10 years for a decade it, it, i mean if you, if the, the, the i think it's sm hold on smh maybe no it's, it's no, that's the semis, yeah. i forget sta st i don't i don't know it anyway it's that's, it's it yeah. looks it looks exact it, it just trust me on the fact that it looks exactly like this and it's an etf but it tracks the two year and again folks this is where i would recommend back in the 90s and the 2000s mm -hmm. when you had excess money in the futures account or excess cash I would say just put it in this asset, whatever I, again, whatever that asset was, or the two-year. But look at this thing. I mean, look at this thing. This thing has been moving. I mean, really, really well, moving. Rates, man. I mean, that's obviously like the price is inversely correlated to rates. But the Fed is out here saying they're, they're going to most likely do enough. Like this, this CPI number was red hot, right? And the yeah. jobs number was also too strong. And so we're going to look at this thing as like seventy-five basis points, most likely coming in, incoming at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So. It, should the two-year trade below four percent, it could. There's a case to be made that the CPI isn't slowing down, and this thing needs to go to five percent. Oh my 6%. god! Six percent. Are you kidding me? Uh, listen, man, nothing's working. I'm not, how can we know? How can we know what these that's, guys are going to stop at? That's the only crazy thing that's right going to stop these guys. Political pressure. Yeah, I think there's yeah. going to be a bloodbath 
in November against the Democrats because of inflation, because of the stock market, because of the economy, because of real, the real average Joe is getting smashed where it hurts. They're getting smashed on their, on their earnings and they're getting smashed on the cost of living, which isn't really coming down. And the energy price, back. Ga gas prices in California are over $8 a gallon right exactly. now. Exactly. Like, so everybody was like celebrating this 20% pullback after a hundred percent increase. And it's like, guys, like there's certain parts of, of inflation that don't just roll back. And that's the problem. It takes a little bit longer. It's you need a deep recession to stop to, to, to create a housing crisis. Do you want a housing crisis? I don't know. I don't think you do. No. I don't think they're doing the calculus on this. I don't think they're thinking this whole thing through. Do you really want to create a housing market crash at this point just no. to slow down inflation? No, no. But they're 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 just gung ho, man. They're just gung ho, and uh, that Powell. Uh... You, you watch. You you read what like El Arian says because he's yeah, obviously yeah. a very intelligent guy that's run like every major Pimco, Harvard. Yeah, like, yeah. This guy yeah, is yeah. an esteemed Tough. economist, but really a money manager. He like blends both worlds almost better than anyone I've ever seen. And he was out saying the fret the Fed has made four like cardinal sins. Four. I had him at two. He's got him at four. <laughs> you know? And so he's trying to like talk them off of making the biggest mistakes ever. But I don't and, and so does so is Jeremy Siegel at uh at, yeah, at Ward Penn, who's also very highly esteemed. But I don't know what these guys are thinking. So stock in the I'm hoping, Roger that we get back to a market of stocks, which is where we both excel, where you have to pick winners and you have to pick losers. And you're, you know, you can, you can, you can fix and tricks within that. And not everything is just like lock limit down or lock limit up. Right. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. This is, this is not good for stability. Uh, reversion to the mean is not working out as well right now. Right. Obvi I mean, obviously, the, the, you know, when you're talking about events that happen three, four times in history, this is uh, a, <laughs> This is not a time to be a hero, but no. uh, and I know breakout momentum levels have been. I mean, everything has been just kind of very, very. I mean, things have been just suffering across the board. Right. Implied volatility is high. high. Um, what what? So so I'm 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 looking for uh, a few sectors right now to really to really surprise investors during earnings. I don't want. I mean, energy is clearly going to be one of them, but I don't even know if that's a surprise anymore. But one of the sectors yeah, that. No, but one of the sectors that I think may be a surprise is is defensive stocks. Yeah, I, think, I, I like that sector. I think government. Yeah, I think government defense. I think spending. I don't think that's going to slow down, especially in light of what we're seeing. I mean, every time we hear the word nuclear, uh, I mean, Elon everybody Musk, and their mother wants to buy a javelin missile defense system right now. Right. Right. So I think that's I think, actually like our number one negotiation tactic with the Saudis in terms of OPEC is we, <laughs> we're going to stop selling. We're going to stop selling you this advanced military technology that's being proven in the Russia Ukraine theater as being so much more advanced than anything anyone has. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And I want to show you another stock, a particular stock that I'm that I really like. I usually I know this is the big picture and we don't talk about individual stocks, but I I'm going it. But I'm, I'm going notes. somewhere with I'm going somewhere with this. Have you ever heard of this company before? It's a pretty crafty company that's making all time highs right now. If you don't know what they do, when I show you what they do, you're going to be like, "Oh, I love this company." No, I don't know them. Check what this do they out. Do? Check this out. <laughs> that's like that old show I used to watch. You ever watch that show, the pawn, the, the pawn father? Pawn, the, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. The guy in but Vegas. It, 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 uh, uh, um, what's it? Yeah, I love, I love, I know, I know what you're talking about. I used to love yeah. that show. I used to yeah, love, yeah. love, 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 love that show. Yeah. The, wow. yeah uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, in this kind of economy, pawn shops are really a no, this is a no brainer. Cash is king right now. And a lot this of people are struggling. Idea. This is a great pawn stars. I knew That's you were. Good. I, I knew you were going to like this. The P ratio is good. The stock is right now obviously making all-time highs. It's wow. also it's also mid cap. A it, case. Yeah, yeah. It's also a mid cap company, and the mid caps are actually um, the and, and that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. The Russells and the mid caps are actually holding up. Uh, they they didn't bottom out nearly as much as the, as the large caps. So th there's a, there's obviously a lot of global exposure in the mid caps than S and P 500 stocks. So they are they are being a lot nicer to us, and they're actually pulling up quite nice. So that stock nice. happens to be in the uh, in the uh, in the mid cap 400. But but yeah, the ticker symbol is FCFS, and I, I really like that stock. I That's wanted a good to share, one. but but simply not not because of that stock, but because anything to do with um, anything to do with with any any company right now that that makes money from hard times 
is definitely a company you want to look at, like cigarette manufacturers, yeah. liquor companies, um, uh, not paper buyers. You don't want to, obviously you don't want to, you know, because we're, we may be going to, but, but anything that raises cash, um, I'm still waiting for gold. I'm still waiting for gold to, uh, to rally, but it, I, it, it doesn't seem like Keep it's waiting. It, it's yeah, not till the, because the U.S. dollar, I mean, that, that U.S. dollar is taking all the oxygen and air. I'm out telling of. you, it's kind of like you're like at a music, you're, you know, like you're like one of these jam bands. And then it's like your big solo and it's your time to shine. The spotlight comes on you and you're going to have this guitar solo. And then it's just like really weak and terrible. That's what this inflationary environment has been for gold. Like this was like theoretically its moment to shine, literally. And it did nothing right. on the upside. It did not nothing. Literally everything else in the world, even with a strong dollar, uh, exploded to the upside because of because of the expansion of the money, you know, money supply. Agreed. Too. But gold, gold did not. So it's like, so well, okay. So when is this thing going to start to matter? I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't I, know. It's. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, it's like. I mean, it. When is it going to matter? I don't know. It it's it's so. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people are just scratching their heads, and they're like, "Do you rather have?" Let me put it this way: So we've had this like super bear market, and I've been telling people, and you've been telling people to be cautious, to keep your capital level high, your cash high, and that was contrary to conventional wisdom a few months ago, where people were like, "Cash is trash," etc. Would you rather have a whole bunch of dollar bills sitting in an account right now, or a bunch of gold that's doing nothing? I think. Dollar is the answer cash, because you definitely can buy cash. stocks liquidly, like on on super fire sales, and make a quick flip and make a bunch of money. Uh, there's going to be like once in a lifetime opportunities. I think in the beginning of 2023 in the markets to buy sectors that are so overly beat down. So the answer is cash. The answer is yeah. cash. And we haven't even had like this pain in real estate that they're trying to do. I was watching uh, what's his name, the guy Barry the. Starwood guy, Barry Sternlich, he was like, there's mm -hmm. going to be distressed fire sales and I can't wait. So I always like take cues from the masters, the really intelligent billionaires out there that know everything, not everything, but they, they have a lot of wisdom. And oh, when you definitely. have a guy that's made his bones in real estate like that saying there's going to be fire sales, have cash. I'd rather have cash for those fire sales in stocks and real estate in, in boats and in, in watches and whatever than gold. Yeah, as a matter of fact, interestingly that you mentioned that I was talking about it, this with Lance, uh, you know, toys, toys like boats, vacation homes, yeah. uh, jewelry, all, a lot of these things are really starting to, uh, starting to, I mean, I know that, I know some boat, boat sellers there's that are deals. starting. There's yeah. deals coming. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely deals coming. And my, I used to have a property in Lake Arrowhead, which is a vacation resort. Um, my, a lot of my family has a house there. It's about, about two hours north, uh, east of L.A., up oh, cool. in the mountains you go skiing there it's fun oh, nice. it's, yeah real fun and um and you can actually get snow there in, in the middle of the regular you know in california which is really unheard of you can ski uh, right yeah you can ski LA. yeah well the, big cool bear place. big bear is just uh 30 minutes up big bear is a very famous uh, yeah, yeah. Ski. Nice. so so um and and my my uncle's had a house there for 20 years i lived there for many many years and he i talked to him yesterday and he said that right now um, besides the the real estate market cooling off, it's still a buyer's market in LA. But up in the mountains, things are totally totally changing. So there is there is a definite change in the consumer sentiment, which is why I thought what you said was very interesting in the beginning. That if we if if Christmas if if, if Christmas time comes and if we don't see a, a, a you know really good support, that could really cause us to uh, th that can cause consumer confidence to really decrease. But at the same time, that may that may cause the Fed to slow down. Although, I don't know if that'll happen. I don't know if that'll happen. I don't know what the Fed is. I think the Fed is so locked in on 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 CPI on inflation. Yeah. On their metrics of inflation that they use, CPI, PCE. Yeah. EMI, yeah. uh, and they're so like, um, what's myopic? They're just looking at it like singularly. Very in a tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Very and tunnel vision. Yeah. Tunnel, and. Uh, you know, that's, that's also why they, they messed up. They messed up. Like they don't look at, they don't have traders. There. They're not looking at asset prices enough, right? If they did, they wouldn't have let the bubble go as long on the upside when we didn't need all that cheap money because they would have been like, instead they were looking six months behind. They would have been like, wait, we're having, what, what are these stocks doing? What is this sector doing? What are rates doing? They would have paid more attention to the markets telling them what the prices are than backward looking data that's manipulated anyways 
they would be, we would have we would have a better situation. But uh, agreed, last. agreed. We Before I let you go, I last mm. one, I was I was doing a, a in person uh, class last Thursday and Friday, and somebody came up to me and they said, "Hey, I don't know if you if you heard, but um, China's doing a round face, and uh, they agreed to comply with the U.S. accounting regulations." Oh yeah, uh, that's old news. That's been out. Yeah, so so I wanted to ask you: Do you think do you think this is all? Ha I mean, do you think that China is really changing their tune, or they're just they're just they're desperate right now, and they're up against the wall because of the the the, the grave COVID conditions they've overcome, and they just need the cash? What do you think? They're gonna they're gonna change their political view, or it's just gonna be a little short term? Total bluffing. They're playing poker. They're, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah, we'll comply. Come come on to us. Doors are locked. You can't come in. Sorry. I think so too. Come I'm back, not come back in six months. Yeah. It, yeah. It's gamesmanship. But more important is what the United States is doing in terms of like barring semiconductor companies from selling any assets to Chinese companies. Like, think about that, Roger. Like applied materials took like a 30% haircut yeah. on potential sales. It's like, it's, it's, it's very know. big. It's very I, I feel like I feel like things are ratcheting up between China and the United States. You know, the irony is like everyone, you know, one of the main campaign things for, for Joe Biden was like that he was going to have better international relations with China. <laughs> and then he comes in and it, it's been anything but the case. It's so, been, no, he's, it's, it's been complete 180. It's been a complete 180. It's been yeah. as bad as Trump, if not worse, because, uh, you know, Trump, they kind of like knew where, what he was about. Like he was playing the game too. I actually like, liked. I actually think. I know a lot of people. I'm going to get flack for this, but I think. I think Trump just due to the way he's built was actually pretty good with international because he took a more. He, why would I think you get flack for that? I like think he, the communists that you know, he was excellent. He was really good because he treated them the way they needed to be treated. Right. Right. He didn't. He didn't sugarcoat anything. He treated them. You the have way to they be needed. able to separate the man from the policy and the policy from like you know that's an adult point of view anyways. Like I, I don't always invest in companies where I think that the CEO is the greatest person in the world. I just look at this person as someone that's capable of delivering results. Uh, politics should be the same. It's not, but <laughs> yeah. So, so, so let me just, let me just really quickly, you brought up something really interesting that I think a lot of people would, would want to hear who haven't been with us for a while. Yeah. So, as you can see, we're looking at the Russell 2000. It's a pretty mm -hmm. interesting story in regards to what you and I just said about how everybody thought that, that Biden was going to change his tune. So the, the Russell 2000, believe it or not, peaked, uh, and you know, all of this, I'm just doing this for the purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the Russell, the, the Russell 2000 peaked almost a year before the S&P and then was going sideways while the S&P was still doing this. S&P was still climbing like that. And mm -hmm. the Russell is just doing this. So why did the Russell peak out right here? What made it go up? It was the it was the pres it was the first presidential debate between Biden and Trump when when the world decided or realized that Trump was not winning. And 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 because and Biden was telling us how tough he was going to how he's going to change course on China. So it, as a result of that, for the first time in a year, these stocks right here started leading ahead. And I said, hey, guys, Biden is winning because he's going to be really soft on China. And and they 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 went up here, up here. And then and then and then we realized Biden, Biden's like, I'm not going to be I'm going to be just as tough on China. And then boom. But this rally was right here, right here. This this right here was hope that Biden was going to win and and become really, really soft in China, and it didn't happen. But I just thought it was kind of interesting because I always I always share the story, and it's interesting you picked up on the same. Yeah, uh, China's a dangerous place to invest. It's yeah. like longer term. There's just too many variables. There's so many cheap American companies right now where you have more or less an idea that they're going to be able to do what they do. I agree. Uh, so why are you going to take on that extra risk for what's not really much extra reward? To me, to me, that's very similar to trading airline and and uh, and cruise ship stocks in the right. last couple of years since that's COVID. Correct. I, that's I correct. I haven't, and uh, I know a lot of people have. I've been extremely cautious with them. I think I've made you one can trade them short, short term, but like yeah. to be like long, long term point of view on on a you know on an industry that could have a massive secular shift. I don't know. Right. Right. Scares me. Agreed. Well, let me ask you this before I let you go. It's a, it's a very. I'm, I'm glad we get a chance to kind of get in, into each other's minds, at least uh, one day. Yeah, or maybe. For sure. And uh, it's good. Nobody interrupts us. It's very nice and uh, and focused. So, do you? What's your take? What would you tell people watching this 
who want some advice going forward over the next few days? Is it still a good time to buy? Are you still seeing a lot of upside? Do you think this rally just started? Uh, any particular I don't, sector? I don't see like a map. I mean, I see upside in the short term. I'm trading it. I don't, I, I, I think you can buy some of the dips. I think you should trade it from the bullish point of view. Till the, uh, do you have the, the uh, spy there? Uh, I, I will in a second. There we go. Yeah, I think you can trade the SPY bullishly uh, for about another, I don't know, 30 points. So up to this $400 level. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. And uh, let me just put a 200 day there. I bet you if we put a 200 day there, it would probably, it would But I think that's that's a place to start lightening up on like longer term position. Yeah, you're talking right between that resistance area we, we hit last time and the 50 day moving average. So right in between right. that and, and, and notice- Maybe a little two, lower. Yeah, like yeah. 390. 390 yeah. seems like a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. So let me tell you my, my insight into this for what it's worth, okay? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I look for when, when we're already in a bullish move uh, up to or down, one thing I look at is I look at large cap stocks. And the, the way I do it is as I screen stocks between $20 and $200 that have a volume of 900,000 shares a day. So it's a, it's a, it's a you know meaningful stock. <coughs> yeah. And when I, I look at 20-day breakouts and I look at the ratio between them and I look at the absolute number, and what I've noticed is when we have these short-term like 5, 10, 20-day you know, runs. Yeah. Uh, either with or against the trend, I'll notice that this number to the upside gets to about 550, 600. Oh, cool. And and on the bottom, you know, uh, the bottoms are obviously a little heavier. It gets to about 700, 750. Mm -hmm. So, 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 and I use this not so much That's to tell me. Yeah, so I use this not so much to tell me if the market is going up or down or what stocks are doing 20 day, because 20 day breakouts are very, you know, it's a lot of noise there. But, but at the same time, what I've noticed almost every time when I'll see this number at 550, we're, we're like two days away from topping out or this number at seven, sub, seven yeah, something. Yeah, it's just we're, getting so stretched. Yeah, so so right now, yesterday, this number was like at 40, 50, and today it's at 192. So based on what I'm seeing, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with your numbers. We still have, what, what I'm trying to say basically is we still have substantial upside before we peak out. I don't think this is it. I think, I think got... it's a trader's tape. I think you have to be nimble. I think that there's going to be opportunity. Like, you know, I have friends that text me all the time and they're like, is this the bottom? Is like, Stop thinking in those terms because this people think still kind of in a way like they were conditioned to think for the last 10 years that there's like this small window of time where you can own a stock or you miss this window to buy the pullback. But when you have correct, like more than a correction, like bearish stocks or a bearish market, you have ample time to get your position on and often at improved prices. Oh, definitely, especially when especially when momentum levels are looking like this. I mean, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're still your friend always. Yeah, right? so yeah. We're still in a broken pattern, you know, bear market rallies, in my opinion. I heard somebody on TV the other day saying we started a new bull market. And I'm like, wow, that is somebody just trying to make a soundbite. Yeah, there, there's no evidence. There's zero off. evidence of that. I think we're a bit a ways away from that, but um, yeah, whatever. People yeah. trying to get famous as usual. Yeah, I don't. I, that's just being stupid, in my opinion. <laughs> that's just being dumb. So, yeah. Jeff, uh, before I let you go, I know you have something going on today at one o'clock. Would, would you like to yeah. tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So, I want to talk about this energy, this energy super cycle that I see happening. We're still in the beginning stages of it. It's going to be a tremendous opportunity to trade. Uh, as as always, I'm looking for a tradable event around that. And I'm going to show people how to trade it with hedge also to protect yourself. And uh, I hope you all join me at one o'clock because it's very interesting what I've discovered. I'm going to check it out. And please, please come by my VIP room today around 1230. Yeah, yeah, and we'll talk we'll, more about I'll, it. I'm going to talk a lot about energies today and some of the mid cap opportunities that I'm seeing, some of the energy opportunities that I'm seeing in mid caps. I think I like mid caps right now. Nice. So, and small caps, but not like tiny stocks. But look, yeah, energy the still makes total sense. The only sector, the only sector that has green across the board. Look at that. The only sector out of the eleven sectors. So you're definitely onto something. And you and I have been talking about energies for a while, and both you and I have the exact same point of view. Yeah. The war is over until inflationary market is behind us. Energies are going to be elevated, and anybody thinks otherwise, they don't. They're not thinking clearly, and they're not. Yeah, thinking and they spread. go higher in crisis, and they go higher with inflation, and they'll go higher if the Fed pivots. There's so many cases for it to go higher. And, and Warren Buffett's not going to be buying, chasing momentum stocks uh, that are overpriced. And he's going all in on, on Oxy. And well, that's I think the craziest thing if you think about it. He's buying a stock 
That's one of the best performing stocks in the stock market this year. Still, as we speak, he's buying it. Um, so, and he only buys things. He doesn't buy things technically. He buys them fundamentally. Exactly. But even after it's outperformed as much as it has, it's still a better buy in, in his point of view, based on what it should make cash flow wise over the next five years than everything else in the stock market. Wow. Th that doesn't hurt either, does it? Doesn't hurt. <laughs> Not an overvalued stock, right? No. And, and Jeff, I, I look at price to sale and look at price to book value. Yeah. We're talking the strongest stock on Wall Street right now. You'd be, not you, but people would be dumb to think the stock is overpriced right now. I mean, it's just well, that's not. The thing. He's going, he's going after, he's going after what he can, he can put a big position on in that is going to protect his downside in, in all kinds of situations, but he has many chances of big wins. And I like to, I like to trade that way too. Yeah, and and I also believe I also believe he's going to be he's going to start investing in other uh, energy companies. I, I I I can't really say more than I than I'm saying right now, but I have very strong uh, information or belief or suspicion that he may he may be investing. You can in keep it at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because because Fair folks, enough. I mean, earnings earnings expectations are like over 150 percent up where everything else is like in the toilet i mean the this yeah. is a sec this is so i'm very excited about hearing what you have to say today at one o'clock thank cool. you again jeff folks Thanks, again Roger. this is a great session please post comments below this video if you want to reach out to me please do support at marketgeeks.com jeff at joyofthetrade.com jeff i'll see you in a couple hours i hope you have yeah, a wonderful afternoon thank bye you. everyone bye, bye guys